Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now excuse my voice, I've got a little bit of a cold so I might sound a little bit lower than I used to. But today on the bench we've got this Sonos Connect. Uh, it's actually our Sonos Connect and it's not turning on anymore. So I'm quite curious to know what's going on with this thing because it's quite an interesting device actually. The build quality, yeah, it's really good. It feels really sturdy and st and, uh, and heavy and steady. So let's get started by opening the device. Now you might have a look around and see, hey, there's no, there are no screws. Well, that's right, the screws are underneath these little tabs. So we'll have to pry them open. So I think they are also glued in place. So, there you go, there's our one warranty void if open sticker, so this thing has no warranty whatsoever anymore, so I was expecting that we could just poke through it. Wow, that's quite a long Philips. There you go. I guess that we should be able to take this thing apart now. I think that the top cover just slides right over the electronics. So, ah, there you go. Just push towards the bottom, and the whole assembly just slides out. Wow. How many wires do they need to connect the front panel? There you go. So, front panel. With a ground strap. Really nice. Really nice. So, this thing can also be used as a wireless device. As you can see. It contains a PCI type slot and this is the wireless card. There are a lot of things glued down to make sure that they really do not come loose during shipment or, uh, or something. Wow, that's quite a long uh, header. Really nice PCB, so only attention to detail that I've missed is cleaning up the flux residue when manually soldering these connectors wow there are a lot of capacitors inside of this thing so yeah again the device isn't really powering on so we're going to take a measure here and there now I can already see that this component is quite heavily burnt and this is probably yeah this is quite damaged actually the smoke test also reveals that this is quite burnt so it's a zener diode I'm trying to identify where the uh, line of the polarity is, but yeah, my guess is that the center diode is bad and causes the and causes the thing uh, not to power on. There is the top PCB containing presumably all the communication chips, and my. Yeah, Eden CPU. My uh, thought is that there will be an I squared S. I think that there's an I squared S line going through to this PCB containing the dock and various other components. We actually need to remove this whole assembly from the 
remaining of the case in order to unscrew the two screws that hold in the power connector. So, all right. So over here, you are able to see quite a bit of damage. I'm not sure what this is, but I think that this is a leaky capacitor. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the power supply to verify if that's the case. Really good. Yeah, there you go. And Those are long screws. Wasn't expecting that. All right, so I think we have a problem. Yeah, this capacitor is definitely gone. Look, it has deseated. So we need to replace that capacitor, probably this diode, and then this thing will work again, let's hope. So it's an 1800 microfarad, uh, 6.3 volts, and I think I might have that one laying around. So I've got a 10 volt thousand, or 16 volt thousand microfarad capacitor, so it's not an exact identical value of the one that's in there right now but let's hope that it will work and I'm also really yeah I think the diode is for the flyback transformer circuitry or something so I'm afraid that we really need it otherwise won't really work so let's check if I've got any diodes so I'm not sure what the exact part number of the diode is because it obviously isn't written on there but I do have a few of those diodes right here and I do think that I can see a black line on one side of the diode so yeah the black line is facing downwards so let's get soldering then so there you go there's the diode now we won't need this PCB anymore no. let's get this PCB here so let's remove the this diode the bad diode <clears throat> oh, it just broke. Nice. Now, let's go ahead and proceed by removing the capacitor. It's a mess. I don't think that it has eaten away anything. So that's really good, but Definite, definitely time for it's definitely time for new capacitor so all right so it's negative side facing downwards positive side facing upwards 
Let's try and align the pins. Oh, that's really good aligned actually. There you go. So that's soldered in place. And I'm quite curious to see and to know what the thing does actually. So I'm just going to assemble it, whatever is needed to power it on. And we'll check if it powers on. Because I'm, as I said, I'm quite curious to know. It's quite important actually to also connect the antennas when you're testing something. Because otherwise it's powering and putting all its power, it's, it's back feeding itself if you don't. Front panel connection, let's plug in the front panel connection. There you go. And let's install it briefly like this. So let's actually power this thing on. So I'm quite curious to know if this is going to go up in flames or if this isn't. So let's go. I can hear something ticking. That's usually not a good sign when nothing happens. So let's remove the PCB. And let's carefully inspect it a little more. I'm going to have a search on the internet to see if I can find any power supply module photos. So it might be that we've soldered it in reverse. Brown is the ground wire so let's go ahead and try to reverse the polarity and see what we get. Alright so we're going to try it on the bench because I know the output voltages. So Let's see what we get. volts please bear in mind this is unloaded 8 volts that's a little bit high but again it's unloaded so I'm actually not sure what the what happens if we load we can load it a little bit but not too much so, let's see. A little bit wobbly. Yeah, this is at 8.3. This is definitely too high. So I think we need a new power supply for this thing. Because it's dead, and if I, if I plug it in like this, the Sonos will die almost certainly, because this voltage is way too high. So, I might not do a new power supply, because, uh, yeah, we actually barely use it, so, yeah, I'm not sure. It was a nice uh, attempt in order to save some electronic waste. And most importantly in order to have a look at the contents of the Sonos. So please let me know down below uh, if I should save this Sonos. And if you say that I should then I might save it. So thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Um, yeah, if things don't break. I'm not able to do any more of these repair videos. But if things break, I am. So... I guess then let's hope that things will break. Either way, I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh, hey, hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them. And don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.